Okay, thank you everybody for joining us for the DOCOVA v6 overview webinar. My name is John Ryan. I'm a Chief Technology Officer at DOCOVA and uh, joining me is our Channel Partner Manager Gary Walsh and an Account Manager Dave Weiss. Okay, our agenda for today. Um, I'm just going to go over uh, a little bit of low-code application platforms, uh, our workspace options, uh, our new DOCOVA SaaS solution, uh, managing applications, um, some stuff that we've recently finished with DOCOVA around DevOps with apps. I'm going to go over our Microsoft stack and a little bit of stuff to do with um, O365, which is now MS365 that we've done, and just make sure everybody knows um, about DocOva and it um, and the Microsoft stack or the, the software that DocOva runs with for Microsoft. Uh, our App Store and what we use our App Store for, uh, some of our workflow enhancements that we put in, some mobile enhancements, and Gary's going to give you a demonstration for that. Um, I'll show you some other general enhancements, and then we're going to look at a little bit of what's coming soon. Okay, so DocOva Low Code uh, application platform. So um, our whole sort of um, approach to this is developing on DocOva so that, uh, you know, um, what we're trying to do is we're trying to make it so that when you're developing applications or your low code application platform, uh, that not only is it rapid application development and efficient and easy to do um, and enables your citizen developers as well, but that um, we expose all the components um, that we've got so that you're not, uh, you know, when we've uh, provided some sort of design element, that it's not locked into the code of DocOva. It's, it's available for you to use in any of your applications too. And I think you'll understand what I mean maybe further as I get into uh, some of the other components here. Okay, so the load, low code market uh, has been heating up. And, and I'm gonna talk generally about our transition to low code from uh, a document management solution uh, with these points uh, a little bit too. But the low, low code market's heating up and Gartner predicts that 50 plus percent of medium to large size companies uh, will have or be using a low code platform in the next couple of years. Uh, we think DocOva, you know, in our transition is very well positioned in this market and we have a very competitive solution for moving forward. And so we think our clients, all of our customers and clients and business partners are also well positioned in that we, uh, as you learn more about DocOva, I think you'll see that we have a very uh, competitive solution for mo moving forward. Um, just a note about all of our document management functionality. It's all the same. Um, I'm going to talk about some enhancements that are coming. But um, rest assured that everything that you've done in uh, libraries, in our document management interface is all still available, all still there. And we're going to talk about how we're enhancing that a little bit. Um, additionally, I want to talk about uh, spinning up a free trial instance of DocOva. So I'm going to just jump over to our website to show you how you could do that. Uh, but this is, if you want to try it out, uh, you can go and spin up a free instance of DocOva in this part of our SaaS solution. So uh, this is our free trial page. I'm going to show you how to get there. If you go to platform on our website and then pricing, you'll see our DocOva pricing page. And you can read about that and you'll see there's a free trial column right here. And if you come down, you'll be able to see that you can click on the free trial button and then you'll get the free trial uh, spin up form here. Fill that out and it will spin up a, um, a DocOva instance for you and uh, you can get to using it. So that's kind of uh, kind of neat. Um, we'll get notified and, uh, you know, there's a lot of getting started stuff there um, so that you can get started really easy, but we'll also be calling you and make sure that uh, you, you know, get started on the right foot if you do spin up a version. Uh, okay, our workspace. So uh, we had the standard and tiled workspace options, and now we have it for mobile too. Later on, Gary's going to demonstrate an application for you. He's going to show you a little bit of the mobile interface, and so you can see what that looks like. Um, our, our workspace allows users to, you know, easily set up how they work and what they use. You know, you can pin 
applications open and so on and so forth. There's uh, widgets that you can create. So and, and so let me uh, again jump out and we'll just have a quick look at that interface. This is the default workspace interface now for Docova. Um, when you spin up an instance, this is what you'll see initially. Uh, you can see the getting started widget there, uh, which has links to uh, videos that will help you uh, get started quickly. Again, we'll be calling you if you do spin up an instance um, so that we can uh, make sure you get off on the right foot. Uh, what's over on the right hand side here is uh, the ability to launch the App Store. I'm going to talk a little bit about the App Store um, and its importance uh, in just a few minutes. Um, and uh, with this, you can see um, that your applications are organized on the left hand side. You have your most recently used applications. Um, you can create collection sections of applications um, if you use them grouped together and uh, there's different scenarios for that. Um, there's a view here of all applications. Uh, you can also see templates, so any applications that are slotted as templates and system uh, applications. Uh, everybody who already uses uh, an older version of Lotus, no I mean of, uh, of Docova, you'll know that we have admin and dashboard designer and search tabs. And uh, what we've do, done in this interface is we've conceptually turned them into applications so that now you have an admin application, a dashboard application, a designer application, so forth, right? So all your libraries are still accessible through the libraries here. You can also use libraries as if they were single applications up here. Uh, we also have a, a searching capability up here so that uh, right away, if I wanna find a project management app or invoicing app or something like that, I just have to start typing it and it will find all the applications with that word in it. And then you can clear it easy uh, and so forth. Okay, so um, we have that interface. And of course we have our original interface still too. Some people really like that interface, which is the tiled interface, which is on the bottom right here. That interface is um, still available and you can create panels and um, you know just manage your applications like that. Anybody who came from the Lotus Notes uh, world uh, will appreciate that type of uh, interface for managing their applications. Okay, so um, Docco, so we've we've just finished our Docova SaaS solution. Now we've always been available in the cloud, but now um, we've uh, made a more automated uh, solution, SaaS solution for Docova. Um, you can still run it on the cloud or on premises. Um, we allow a customer to choose that, so we're still as flexible, and you can run uh, a mix of that as well. Um, you can also run it on other platforms. So of course, uh, Azure, AWS, or any other hosting service that you might have. Uh, it doesn't matter as long as it's a server. <laughs> um, our Docova SaaS solution, we uh, you know, take the worry out of your hands of managing the hardware. So uh, we will manage backing up your instance or instances of Docova. We manage the CPU, the hard disk drive, and the memory of your uh, environment. And we make sure that uh, uh, your system is running with a certain amount of uh, efficiency. And if it starts to drop bef below that uh, performance and that uh, um, efficiency, then uh, we're automatically um, alerted to uh, you know, you running out of hard disk space or something like that. And we can proactively go and adjust those things for you and with no additional cost to you so that uh, you don't see any interruption in your service. Um, we've also, uh, in the, the SaaS solution, increased performance through uh, software caching and load balancing so that our SaaS solution is very fast. Uh, okay, so managing uh, applications and development. So we are a low code solution uh, now and from a DevOps point of view. And, and I just want to talk, I guess it didn't from the very beginning there. I did want to talk about transitioning from document management to a low code solution. You know, the reality was that we had a lot of our customers, every one of our customers was asking us to change our library um, formats um, into what were essentially applications. So we're always, every time we went into a customer, we we're making um, custom changes to our library templates uh, in order to facilitate things like invoice processing, 
or uh, quality management solutions and stuff like that for our customers. And uh, that was part of what prompted us to create the designer in the library so that you could create your own custom document types. Um, but it was going further and further. And so it just made sense for us to transition entirely over to creating uh, applications and, and just, you know, naturally drove us into the low code market. Uh, and so that's why we're there. And so as part of that and part of our experience as being um, uh, you know, seasoned business application developers for 20 years now, um, where we used to do a lot of custom uh, business application development for our customers. Uh, we know that a lot of customers run or a lot of businesses run development, user acceptance, testing and production environments. And so we've facilitated that in Docova as well, where you can have several instances of Docova one being a development instance, one being a testing, and one being a production. And we've completed the ability to push applications between those environments. So you can go into an application and deploy it from development into a testing environment, and then from testing into a, a production environment. You can include the design and the data if you want, or you can uh, not use uh, not to push the data. So. If you're testing, for example, and you have a whole bunch of test data in your application that you're testing, you don't want to push that test data to production. However, sometimes you do have settings and documents or records in your application, and that is data, and you do want to push that to production. And so we've facilitated the ability to do both, both of those things. Uh, in addition, we've uh, added and completed the import and export application capabilities. And so you can go into uh, your instance of Docova and export an application out of Docova and then go to another instance of Docova and import it. Um, that serves a couple of purposes. Uh, it can be a DevOps uh, sort of development to testing to production type of functionality. It can be the ability to um, have an internal instance of Docova and an external uh, instance of Docova for suppliers and customers, for example, depending on how you want to set that sort of thing up. Or for business partners, they can develop an application, for example, for their customer on their own instance of Docova and then export it and then import it into their customer's uh, instance and, uh, and facilitate that. So you could also use it as, as your own sort of ad hoc backup, which we do sometimes here. Uh, so we've made it super easy to just export. And again, that too uh, is design and or data. So you can export the application and its data and then go over to another instance and import it in. Makes it super easy. And in fact, that's how we do our store. So we create something on our instances, we export it, and then that format that we've exported, we make available to our store. And we just basically invoke that same functionality in order to install something from our store. Okay, uh, the Microsoft uh, stack. I just want to touch on the Microsoft stack so everybody is aware. A lot of people are using Azure. A lot of our customers use SQL Server. And so we just wanted to reiterate and uh, talk about some add-ins. Um, so we uh, definitely run on Azure. Um, in fact, anything when I, when I jump over and I'm showing you a little bit of Docova um, during this presentation, um, I'm actually, on a server at our offices. However, I am authenticating against um, my Microsoft Office 365 um, credentials or my our, our Azure Active Directory credentials. And so, of course, you can run Docker on Azure. You can use Active Directory. You can use Azure Active Directory, SQL Server. Um, we've always been integrated with uh, desktop Microsoft Office in Windows uh, through our um, through our plugin. And now we're expanding it, uh, extending it more into add-ins that integrate with O365. Now, MS365 um, products like Outlook, Word, and stuff. So I'll talk a little bit more about the other products at the end. But uh, right now, uh, we have an Outlook add-in called Message Importer. And uh, this is a little screen cap of what it looks like. Uh, this um, integrates directly. So you can take forms in applications and make them available to your Outlook, uh, your Microsoft uh, 365 Outlook interface. So here you can see my Outlook uh, mail. So you can see that on the left hand side here, I've clicked on a message. The message is showing over here. It has two file attachments inside of it. And the message importer here I've invoked because the manifest has been installed, which is quite easy. 
uh, has been installed here and I can see my Docover logo right here. When I click on it, it opens up the message importer and now I can import the to and from and subject and body of a message into an application, for example, if that application form has subject and so on. Um, or I can, for example, file an invoice or file a, a statement of work or an RFP or an engineering drawing or marketing or anything, any file attachments. They're listed here. You can choose which ones you want. And then you can pick what application and form that you'd like to uh, file this into. And once you pick that, those fields from those forms uh, will come up and you can um, interact directly from Outlook with that form that's in that application and save uh, that document or that document attachments and set up any other information, you know, that that might be in the fields um, from that uh, uh, from that application. So it just makes it uh, really easy to get information from your mail system into your applications, whether that's, um, you know, uh, metadata that you need to define or file attachments or the message itself. Okay, our App Store. I want to talk a little bit about our App Store because, it, you know, it is a way for us to disseminate applications for our business partners to disseminate applications. Our App Store out of the box has about 20 uh, free applications. We don't support them. They're just example applications. Um, they're free. You're free to take them and turn them into something more beautiful. Um, they have certain functionality like a project management app and some of them have mobile interfaces and things like that. Um, there are examples for your own creations or for you to take and turn into something that suits you uh, even more. They're fully um, changeable. You can add your fields, remove them, whatever, they're wide open. Uh, in fact, there's no way to lock them down. And you can, uh, so you can leverage those. Um, and, and we'll be demonstrating those. So as we expand our YouTube channel um, to be more of a forum, uh, for what's available in Docova and what you can do with Docova. Um, showing some of those applications as demos will be um, part of that because we do we do use a bunch of uh, the elements that are available in Docova to demonstrate uh, those things. But the App Store, aside from applications that we provide for free and um, aside from uh, providing applications that you can buy from our business partners through our store, um, it is also a way uh, for us to disseminate uh, information, uh, namely our user developer and administration guides and our API and formula documentation, right? So, um, and, and also uh, other supporting things like uh, our Outlook integration. And uh, so I'll just move on to the next slide here to show that the documentation, so these particular apps, this is how they appear in the store, uh, our documentation. Um, and so as we update this documentation, we will deploy it to our store. Um, you'll get notified that these things have been updated and at your leisure, you can go and uh, get the latest documentation. Uh, usually it makes sense as you upgrade uh, Docova to get the latest documentation, uh, but um, all of this is uh, will be available to you. And, and it really marks a milestone for us too, because we really didn't have that strong documentation before, but now uh, we have quite a bit. Uh, also, examples of demos, like I mentioned, um, we have those those applications that you can use and modify for yourself. But um, I'm going to talk specifically here about the Element Demos application. This is an application that we put a bunch of uh, demonstration uh, forms in and stuff where we demonstrate uh, some of the functionalities of our charts and our forms and our views and so on. And we're going to look at a couple of those in a few minutes. Um, but this particular database is a great resource for examples and how you could use data islands and sliders and all those kind of things in your own applications. Um, and then functional integration. So I, often, I mentioned our Outlook uh, 365 um, plugin and uh, it comes with um, a demo database called Docova Inbox, which has code in it um, to show you how to use uh, the Office 3, how to integrate your Office 365 plugin and uh, your Outlook 365 plugin. And um, the Outlook 365 add in uh, database it actually has a place where you define targets. So, this is where you um, can say uh, which forms from which applications are available to um, 
uh, Office uh, 365 or, or Outlook 365. Um, okay, so store becomes a pretty important place for, for not just getting uh, example applications and documentation and examples, but it also has like uh, some some core things like uh, our plugin database um, so that you can enable that feature. Uh, okay. Workflow enhancements. All right, so uh, we have a new graphical flowchart interface. We've had that for a little while. And I'm going to show you it a little bit. Um, uh, it integrates with uh, elements on our document form. I'm going to tell you what that means and, and show you a little bit. And uh, we've now included an email or messaging element uh, to provide more flexibility. Uh, you can string several of them together. Um, I, I'm going to show you a little bit about that. Also, this at mention functionality for productivity. So we've added this at mention functionality into our uh, rich text fields as well for forms. And what that does is it allows you to say, you know, at John Ryan. So if you're typing something like a paragraph, you can say at John Ryan or in a mail message um, that you're putting into workflow, you can say at John Ryan in in that message. And what it will do, it will give you the opportunity to um, when that is being executed to uh, for it to know that there's there was somebody mentioned somewhere and so that you can create a productivity app for example or or you can just send a mail message to somebody so that you could for example uh, create a document and say oh you know at at mention john ryan and so you put john ryan in into that message and when you save it it's smart enough to know to message john ryan and say hey you were mentioned in this document Right. Um, or as part of workflow, hey, you were mentioned as part of this workflow. Now, we do define uh, participants as part of workflow, but this at mention gives you another a layer of uh, flexibility and capability um, to um, basically share and, and be more productive. You, where if you imagine you could have a productivity widget on your front workspace um, where workflow information and, and anything you know where you were mentioned in comments on a document or something like that all flows into one funnel where you can see and uh, give it your attention right away right out of your workspace okay so um, also uh, I'm gonna so I'm gonna show you the workspace uh, I mean the uh, the workflow interface uh, quickly here for a second but um, I also wanted to talk about the document interface so you know when uh, uh, a, a certain form type is associated with a workflow. Um, this is the new interface that you'll see. Um, you can choose this one. You can also um, choose to see the old interface as well. But this new interface, we thought, you know, it gives you nice these nice, you know, contemporary looking uh, green arrows um, as a document uh, walks through its workflow. And you can uh, see where it is in the workflow and you can click on any of these sort of arrows. Um, to see the information about that workflow step when it started, who's participating in it, and so forth. So it's just a nice way uh, to depict it on a document um, as uh, that document goes through its workflow. So, okay, let's jump out here and quickly go over to the App Builder. And I'm in the workflow screen here of the Elements de Demos database. Now, I'm not going to save the front. I'm just going to demonstrate it a little bit. Uh, so if I click on New Workflow, of course now, so we have, I'm just gonna drag over like a decision uh, element and I'm, I'm going to reassociate the start, start the workflow, go to this decision first. Of course, when you click on a decision, you can put any formula. And this is where I'm talking about that as you use formulas and stuff like that, you can get fields and information off the current document that this workflow is working on at any time, right? Which makes it really easy. And if you remember before, um, our workflow is very linear uh, when we created it. And so, you know, you have the start and end stops and you have approving and reviewing. If you wanted to do anything different in that workflow, uh, you basically had to use the API, the workflow API in order to modify it and so on. But this way uh, you have a lot more flexibility in terms of um, what you want to do. And at the same time, you know, you are uh, documenting basically the workflow. So you get a visual representation of the workflow processes uh, in your application. So here, uh, again, I'm just going to add a couple more components here. 
uh, of course, the a view, review and approve. When you click on them, you of course get all the options. Uh, these are very similar to what they used to be before in the more linear um, thing, but it's, you know, who are the participants and stuff like that. You can create formulas for who is the, who are the participants as a parallel serial um, and so on, what approver button uh, labels look like and so on. But you'll notice there are also uh, clever nodes on each of these elements, right? So if a decision is false or true, then we have these nodes and you, and you basically draw from those nodes. When a review has been reviewed, then what next? In an approval, if it's approved, then what next? If it's denied, then what, right? So you drag it to the next thing. Now, in terms of the new messaging um, component that we've added, this is the ability, uh, if you remember before, you used to have to create system messages um, and uh, they're a little bit clunky, a little bit hard to do. This is much more low code um, in that uh, you add the message and then you edit the message. And here you define uh, who it's going to go to, what the subject is, and what the body is. And as you can see in the helper text here, that you can use uh, JavaScript or our formula language to uh, formulate those messages um, using information right off the form. Um, so they're much more dynamic uh, in their capability now, and they're much more flexible because I could, you know, go and strap two messages in a row if I wanted to, right? And uh, whereas before you couldn't do this kind of thing where I could just say, oh, after I finish sending this message, then go ahead and send this message type of thing. And so it's unlimited now in what you can do. Um, and, and we think a lot easier uh, to actually put together um, so we, we've kind of killed two birds with one stone in that we've made it much more flexible and that you can put in much more complex workflows, but made it much easier to do so. Okay. So really excited about our workflow and, uh, you know, we really think it's, uh, it's going to help build application, really good, sophisticated applications um, uh, really quickly. And, and that's part of the low-code thing, right? As we moved into the low-code world, uh, some people say, oh, it's low-code. You can only do so much with low-code, and, and we beg to differ. We think we've made a solution that is the ultimate low-code solution in that you really have the ability to do so many things with it. Um, you're really unlimited, and uh, we, we really don't hold you back. Okay, mobile enhancements. Okay, so now uh, Gary is going to go ahead and uh, demo uh, an application. Now this application, um, although not that complex, it's got a lot of a really good uh, detail in it. And um, it has a desktop slash laptop interface as well as a mobile interface. And Gary's gonna show you some of the views, embedded views and forms and stuff that is in it. So take it away, Gary. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to show you an application that was created using Docova. It's interesting in that it has two interfaces. I'll just go over to the browser here. There's a browser-based interface to the system and a mobile-based interface. Okay. I'm going to open up the application here. This is for an aircraft maintenance facility. And this company, what they do is they work on aircraft either under their AMO, which is the way they would work on certified aircraft, or they work on aircraft that are owned privately. Okay. And the default uh, uh, display here, uh, there's a menuing system on the left and then information in the main pane here. And you can see all the work is shown by the status. It's complete or it's in progress. Uh, if I open up complete jobs, you can see some information on the, on the jobs and that kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, the menu system, really there's, there's kind of three main forms uh, that this system manages. The first one is, is a customer record. Well, there's actually four. And if I look, I can see customers by name. If I open up a customer, for example, this one here, okay, I'll see the customer information in the customer record and then aircraft that that customer owns showing up in what we call an embedded view. Okay. So here's the customer record, here's the aircraft record down here. And these two have a kind of a parent-child relationship to them. The other type of uh, record that you have in the system is what we call a work order. So if I create a new work order here, work orders are essentially, if you're gonna work on an aircraft, then you fill out some basic information, who the customer is, uh, what the aircraft is, the type of aircraft, some customer info on here, uh, priorities, who's assigned to on the shop floor and what status it is. It'll go from you know, potentially being just a lead 
to something they're actually working on and it goes from pending to in progress to complete that kind of thing. Okay. Uh, the other type of record that you have is time logs. Once you create a work order, uh, you can actually start logging time against it. Okay. So, And again, just like the customer in the aircraft where there's a parent-child relationship, it's the same thing on the work order and a time log if it's parent-child. Now this is a net new one, so obviously there's no time records associated to it. One thing that's interesting about this form is if you have a new customer or a new aircraft, when you save the work order, it'll sense that and it'll ask you, do you want me to populate the customer record and the aircraft record, in which case it'll automatically kind of uh, get grouped up into this grouping up here. So the system's intelligent enough to, to collect new data and recategorize it and put it into the, into the system. Okay. As I mentioned, there's those time logs. Um, you can actually launch a time log right off of, a, of an active work order or you can just launch a time log by clicking time log. And what it's doing is it's actually a very, very simple form. They used to use a punch clock system, but they could never really manage it properly. Uh, and uh, really, I'm showing you this through a browser, but the, the technicians on the shop floor have their cell phones and they're not gonna walk up to the office to actually open a browser to log a time log. They'll do it right from the shop floor. But the process is you clock in on a job, you can't clock in until you tell it what work order you're working on. So it'll take and clock in on a job here. Now it's actually collecting time information. If I was to go in and, and click on the time log again, it knows I'm clocked in. So it'll ask me if I want to clock out. And if I want to clock out on the job, I have to put in exactly what I've been working on on the job. Okay, so this is just collecting time records. You can also change the job. So you might be working on one aircraft and then you have to jump out and work on another. There's the ability to do that as well. So if we take a look at, uh, at uh, uh, some of the time logs in the system, here's all of them by year. So you can see it's grouped up by the year, by the quarter, and by the month. If I look at some of these time logs, okay, you can see that these time logs are collecting total work time, uh, it's uh, start time and end time. So it gives you kind of the information on what the employee has been doing over time. Now there's some interesting reports in here. There's one report, which is a time log report, which the admins use. And what they'll do is they'll say, you know, time log report for April uh, for work order number such and such from this date range, you know, at the beginning of the month to the end of the month type thing. And then they'll click on here and they'll actually run a report. And this is used for payroll. They can actually uh, by employee determine what they worked on. It'll accumulate the total number of hours and you can run their payroll. Okay. Uh, that's kind of a, a brief overview of the system. Uh, you know, there's other views of information. There's this admin grouping down here where the whenever you create a new work order, it does it sequentially. And if they ever get out of sync, you can resync them up. Uh, shop supplies, uh, requesting them and viewing them and parts requesting them and viewing them uh, are also kind of done through this interface. Now, as I mentioned, this is what the admin people would use. I'm just gonna go and simulate what you would see on the shop floor from one of the technicians. So obviously I can't show you my phone, but what I can do is I can mimic the phone here just by running a bit of an emulation. And so we'll take and uh, shrink the screen a little bit. So this is simulating what you would see on a smartphone, either an iPhone or an, an Android device. And if I go into the exact same application now, you'll see the UI is different, obviously, because you've got less real estate. But you've got the same type of information, customers. I can look at all the customers. Okay, I don't get the same categorization you got in the browser, okay, but I can still navigate through my customers. If I wanted to, I could create a work order. Typically, a technician wouldn't create a work order, but sometimes they do. If you click on active work orders, this shows all the work orders that are active in the system. And you could then open up one of these and start logging time against it. And if you click log time, it'll clock you in. And then if you go back in, you can clock out again. Okay. The other way that you can start logging time is, is directly off the interface. So you can click here and you say, I start logging in. Okay, you see how it knows I'm clocked in because I clocked in on a job when I was on the browser. The only option I've got is clock out. So I did this and that. I'm gonna take a clock out on this job. Okay, if I now look at my time logs, this shows me everything that I'm currently working on or, or have worked on. 
So again, it's it's a very simple interface. A technician on the floor is told to do some work, picks up his phone, um, he looks up the work order number, and he clocks in on the job. And then when he's done working, it clocks out on it, and it, it collects those time records. Now there's more to the system. They can they can request shop supplies, and there's some other things you can do. But that's the general gist behind it. Again, put together very very quickly. Put together custom uh, to the way that the customer works, and using the mobile interface and the uh, uh, browser interface, depending on who is actually accessing the system. So uh, hopefully that gives you a bit of an idea in terms of what you can do with DuckOver. Okay, so thanks, Gary. That was great. Uh, we hope that's uh, useful to everybody to see. And if you have any questions, of course, uh, don't hesitate to ask us. Um, okay, a couple of more things. Um, other general enhancement that we've made. Um, there's, a, there's a number of little things that we've done, like uh, font family options. So we've added fonts. Um, we've also... Um, added some view enhancements, uh, which we think are really great. So um, I have some examples here I'm going to jump out and show. So let me uh, jump over to here. So here's the elements, you know, now I'm in the element demos application here. And I've come down to this example, which is a project tasks example. So these are documents. If I double click on one, I'm opening it. Notice that I'm opening it in a dialog. So you can say open it as a separate document on its own tab or to open it in a dialog. It's a, it's a one click option. Uh, but you can see here that uh, we've added enhancements to our views in that you can you can have an avatar column, you know, based on username like assigned to here. You can have progress columns, status and priority columns where you choose colors and um, and, and trigger uh, content to uh, you know color the cells in these views in these uh, rows. And so for this status here, if it's done, it's green. If we're working on it, it's uh, it's this uh, yellow. If it's not started, it's blue, right? The priority, if it's high, it's red, that sort of thing, right? The progress bars, you can round these progress bars out. You can also, um, you know, uh, change the color, make them squared off, whatever. There's also a star system, so an easy way to put a five star system in <coughs> or, or column to, um, you know, uh, just as a, a, a way to, um, a show priority, for example. So we've given you these options. Um, these are point and click. So all you have to do is uh, there's their point and click set upable. Um, but we've also given the um, ability to code these things so that um, if you don't, if you're something more that you want to do that you're not limited by the point and click click capability of these views. Um, we also have uh, animation. So for example, here's going to be an, an animation example. You'll see as I click on it that we've animated some of these things, which just, you know, uh, lends to the um, uh, just the aesthetic of the application. And if your uh, users enjoy uh, using these applications because of the animations and stuff like that, then they'll use them more. Um, we also have um, um, things like Gantt views and um, calendar view. So here's an example of a calendar view. You have the capability of coloring. So these are just documents in a view, except then we said, oh, use, you know, use it as a calendar. And so we determine easily what the functionality is of these. And so you can see here that I've color coded these based on the project that they're associated with. Um, if you double click on them and you can define this behavior, it opens up that corresponding document, for example. And so uh, we also have um, month, week, day, and list views that are available. And so it's really easy to put together um, these kind of uh, schedule uh, type of um, views. Um, also on this particular view, I've, uh, we've added a, a view title bar. So you can see that I've put project task schedule above here. And over on the right hand side, I've given a little instruction you know, different font, different color of the font, right justified. So this is a title bar that you can add to any view. So sometimes you have views that look like sort of Excel spreadsheet type of uh, reports or, or like reports, or you want them to look like a report. And therefore um, we've added the ability to uh, add a sked, you know, a, a title bar at the top here um, just for that aesthetic. 
so that's a little bit about uh, some of the new cool things for views. Add some color to your applications. Um, the app mention I uh, had talked about already that we put in there, it's a great productivity tool. It's a, it's a small, seemingly small thing, but it's a really great productivity um, little tool where you can, you know, tie applications together and actions together for users. Um, there's also several new functions and several new API functions. I won't go through them all, uh, but there's create document and disable. Um, uh, really super useful little functions. Uh, the disable, for example, is a dynamic way where you can enable and disable fields on forms, for example, um, at your whim, you know, at your desire, you know, as you're going. So, and uh, the ability to do that, uh, or, or making the ability to do that super easy to do, um, so that your forms really work the way you want them to work. Um, refresh application application design, so you can take an application in Docova and you can um, make it a template and create uh, other applications from that template. And then you can go to an application, you can refresh its design, and it will say, "Hey, what what template was I created with?" And you know, uh, it'll refresh that sign. So where that design, so where that's useful, and anybody from the Lotus Notes world knows that you could have several applications that are all based on the same template. And so you just have to go to that one template, make your design changes to it, and then go and refresh uh, the corresponding applications with that template. Um, and we have, of course, all the prohibit design uh, replace capabilities. So if you've created an application with a template, but you've made a modification to a form or you've made a modification to a view that you don't want the template to refresh, um, you can, you know, uh, check off a property on that design element and say, you know, uh, when you refresh with the template, don't refresh this, right? So all that kind of functionality is built in as well. Okay, a little bit about what's coming soon. Um, we'll send out messages with links to our vids on YouTube channel. I mentioned YouTube, our YouTube channel a little bit before. So we really want to enhance that. We really want that to become our sort of uh, forum um, for Q and A and for disseminating, um, you know, product information and uh, application demos and things like that. And really have a connection with our customers and our business partners in terms of, um, you know, making sure that you're as uh, successful as possible with what you're trying to achieve. And, uh, and that we have a really good communication between us. Um, I showed you the uh, MS365 Outlook uh, add-in. And uh, just to say that there's a Word, Excel, and PowerPoint one coming as well. Um, so of course we have very deep integration with uh, Microsoft Office on your desktop, um, but we're uh, you know, uh, gonna be able to show this uh, very soon in terms of uh, you know, deeper integration with these O365 product or MS365 products, and also OneDrive uh, as well. So there, there'll be some uh, sort of integration with that as well. Okay, a video conferencing component. So, you know, in these days of COVID, you know, we've done a lot of video conferencing lately, and we've added, uh, let me just take a drink of water here for a second. We've taken, um, it kind of to the next level, and, and part of what I talked uh, in terms of developing on Docova is that you know you'll use a WebEx or GoToMeeting or Blue Jeans or something uh, to uh, video conference, and you know it's a video conferencing software, separate software typically. And so what we wanted to do is have uh, video conferencing where you can make a call and be able to message and share your screens and stuff like that um, the way that you want to do it as part of an application. Right. And so uh, two things that are going to come out, we're going to have two examples of us doing this. One is a team talk application where basically it's like teams and you can make an instant phone call with, with a group of people like right now. So say you're working along here and you're messaging with somebody and then you're like, oh, let's just have a call. You can click one button. It will call the people that are part of that chat, for example, and instantly uh, uh, turn on uh a video conferencing meeting that everybody can join. Uh, everybody gets rung with a little, uh, you know, uh, ringing noise or whatever, and then everybody can join in and you can have an immediate uh, video conferencing call. Um, also, you can create um, a meeting application. 
So we all have an application that we'll post into our store as well that will show you how you can create uh, a meeting and then invite via email a whole bunch of people with a link to the video conferencing um, application. So in our cloud, we'll have um, a server called meet.docova.net. And uh, that's where these video conferences that we're going to be using. You can have your own video conferencing uh, server, for example, and uh, we can show you how to set that up. And what, what it does is it basically just is the place that houses the video conferencing calls. And so this meeting application um, would be where you go and you set up a meeting, you invite people, they get a link. And at that time, you know, they go and click on the link and go to the meeting. Um, there's also some security around it, so uh, of course thought of that. And um, the other thing too is that uh, I, I want to leave you with with this video conferencing component is that um, it's about putting it into your applications, right? So uh, I, I have here as a point of maintenance app. Uh, imagine if you had a maintenance engineer or something in front of a deficiency, you know, whether that's a machine or a construction deficiency on a construction site or something like that, and that person needs to talk to somebody. Right. They can, uh, you know, uh, our video conferencing uh, not only works on your desktop, but also on your mobile. So they could actually make a, an instant phone call to their boss or to another engineer and show them the problem live, you know, through the video conferencing component um, and talk to somebody live about it. You know, some of these problems are, um, you know, where you're not sitting right next to a person or whatever can be complex, hard to type up in a message. And sometimes it's just a lot more efficient to be able just to have a video conference, to be able to show somebody the problem, for example, that's not with you. And so we think that uh, we've made it really easy to provide that kind of functionality into the type of apps that you might want to uh, create. Okay, another thing here is we're moving library uh, document type design into our app builder. Um, so, you know, uh, as I mentioned earlier on, you know, we started as document management and as people asked us to modify DocOva, we ended up creating um, a, a designer uh, in our libraries in order to create more flexible document types. And um, that now is morphed into moving that designer uh, into our app builder or, you know, letting our app builder take over that functionality for our libraries because it's much more sophisticated. It's got a lot more uh, functionality and components into it so that you can make more sophisticated uh, document types that will work in your libraries. Uh, so more flexibility, more options available for you for that. Okay, so uh, like I said, all, all document, uh, all library functionality and document management functionality is still maintained in the new uh, low code solution and we're um, enhancing that as well. Okay, so at this point, I'm gonna hand it off to David Weiss. So Dave's gonna take any uh, questions that uh, might've come up and uh, go through any of, the, any of those. So go ahead, Dave. Thanks, John. Okay, we've got uh, about four questions here. Uh, so the first one is, what uh, platform does DocOva run on if you're running it on-premise? Uh, the application server, it runs on Windows or Linux, and that uses an IIS or Apache web server, respectively. Um, Server-side code is PHP and Twig, and on the client side, which uh, we run on any major browser, uh, it's HTML, JavaScript, and jQuery. Uh, on the database side, uh, most common is Microsoft SQL. Uh, however, we also run a MySQL, MariaDB, or any of the other uh, major databases that are out there. All right, uh, other question was uh, the security model. Uh, as, as John mentioned, we integrate with the Microsoft directory. Uh, so uh, users can use their existing credentials to log in. Uh, within DocOva, there's global settings to manage the domains and subdomains that can access DocOva at all. Uh, and then at the application level, there's uh, security controls uh, to, to define user access levels. So manager, designer, editor, author, reader, etc. cetera. Um, users themselves can either be set up as administrators or users. And um, within the application security, you can uh, define or you can link security to either users explicitly or to groups that those users are in. And those groups can be defined in the, the Microsoft directory. All right, now next question was, uh, can we access the data that's in DocOva uh, from outside of DocOva through diff different uh, SQL tools? 
Um, and the, the short answer is yes, you can. Uh, however, um, the data that, uh, so when, when Dockova stores this data, it's in an abstract manner that works well within Dockova. It doesn't necessarily work well in terms of trying to get that data out or to uh, link it into other applications. Uh, so we have a module called report staging, which um, allows, uh, provides flexibility to uh, map data into single destination uh, table or, or multiple tables uh, so that you can access the data in a more meaningful way. Uh, so just to summarize, so it, uh, the report staging uh, flattens the doc over document data into dedicated tables and you can expand multi-value uh, DocOva data um, into dedicated staging tables, allowing multiple records to be generated from a single DocOva document. Again, it makes it easier uh, to, to pull the data out. Um, and some of, there's some other features to it. But, uh, that uh, module comes as part of DocOva. Uh, and again, it's called report staging. All right, the last question is, uh, what about training? Uh, so included with Docova are uh, some reference materials, so the developer and admin guides uh, and the element demos that uh, John talked about. Uh, there's also online resources available uh, to, to licensed users, uh, so things like Docova University and Tech Notes. Uh, and finally, uh, more formalized training, so uh, classroom style sessions that uh, fully customized to whatever it is that you want what the objectives are, and those can be delivered online or on site. And that's all we've got today. Thank you. Okay, thanks for that, Dave. Um, all right, so uh, that's the end of this webinar. Um, if you have any questions uh, that we didn't cover anything, please reach out to us. Uh, you all should know how to get in touch with us for the most part. Uh, if not, um, you, you can go to the website at docova.com. And uh, there's lots of opportunities to, to connect with us and we'll answer any of your questions. Go ahead and spin up a trial instance. And, uh, you know, thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks a lot.